Welcome to Talon or Sao. Uh, my name is Leah Tilsley and welcome to Friday Night Live. Uh, we have a very special guest tonight and would love to for you to join us and to ask questions. Um, Ethan, welcome. Lovely to have Hi, you Leo, on the show. You. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me again tonight. I'm really happy to be here. It's good to see you. Oh, that's great. We've, we've got lots uh, to have a chat about tonight. Um, and also, it'll be good to get some feedback from our audience and uh, maybe we can answer some of their questions too. Um, uh, we'll have uh, Elliot and Fuyava at some point when they decide to join us. You know, Elliot's a little bit late sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. All right, Elliot. <laughs> um, anyway, let's just start with a word of prayer and um, and then we'll get going. Um, Lord, we just want to thank you that we can come tonight. We thank you that we can have a Telenor that is uh, straight and Lord, that we can bring truth into our conversations. We ask God that you bless it and bless our time together. We know that um, some very difficult times that we are living in, but we are excited, Lord, that we're here for such a time as this. So we just ask that you bless uh, our time together um, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So how have you been? How have you been uh, this past seven weeks? I've been very good. Been doing lots of uh, school teaching online. Uh, we're in school holidays now, which is good. Uh, lots of family time because of the lockdown, of course. But things are going well. Mm -hmm. How have you been? Yeah, it's been a very interesting learning time for me. Um, I have tried to keep uh, quite relevant to, um, I have been running um, some online courses as well, um, especially around preparing people uh, in case of an emergency, which is quite relevant right now. Um, yeah, so I've been doing really well and uh, keeping healthy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so but there is a lot of things that will be good to have a discussion around. And um, so I just thought, actually, how are things going uh, with your kids? Um, how are they feeling during this time of having to, to learn online? Can you give us a, just a little bit yeah, of... Yeah. So I teach high school students. Um, I teach all the year levels throughout our high school. And... Uh, it hasn't been pleasant for any of them. It's been very tough learning online. Um, our seniors have Cambridge exams coming up very, very soon. Like as soon as term four starts back, they're straight into that. And learning online, although we offer a really good online program, nothing compares with being able to see your students in person, uh, talk to them face to face. Um, and even the, and especially the relational side of um, being able to chat to kids at lunchtime and just hear how life's going. Uh, from what mm. I understand, it's been very tough for a number of them being at home uh, without our school community around them to support them. Uh, it's definitely not been ideal at all. It's been very tough for them. Um, how have there, have you noticed um, just around their mental health? You know, this is this is difficult for, you know, adults to be able to cope with at this time. Um how are our kids being able to, is there support around being able to help them with, you know, um, around this kind of situation? And, you know, mm. it's 18 months to nearly two years we've been in this. You know, mm. ha has there been um, some support from Ministry of Health? I mean, sorry, Ministry of Education around the mental health of our children? Uh, nothing that I'm aware of. Um, I work in a high school that's s small. And it's intentionally small because we love to be the sort of high school where teachers and students can actually have relationships with one another. And what that means is when we're at school, we're able to chat with students personally. Um, so we're able to talk to them personally. They often come to us and just chat about life and we're able to give them uh, Christian support and advice and encouragement. It is a lot harder to do that online. Uh, we've still been able to do some of that, but nothing compared to what we're able to do when we're at school, seeing them every day. Um, we're able to catch the ones who kind of sink into the background. We can see what's going on with them and chat with them. That's, that's just not happening the same um, while we're teaching online, which is really tough, uh, tough for them. Um, it, it sucks for us knowing that there's probably a lot of stuff going on that we're not able to be aware of. Um, 
So in terms of mental health, it's something that the youth in New Zealand struggle with. Um, and for our students, schoolers, for many of them, it's a primary support system that they just don't have access to in the same way. Um, so it's, it's, it's very tough. Yeah. I I mean I, I can't even imagine. Uh, we we looked into um, quite a few weeks ago. Elliot uh, pulled up an article around our younger children between ten and fourteen who are really struggling, you know, having suicidal thoughts, and you know this is a huge um, issue. And then we go into um, high school where you know we are sort of still developing in some respect, but. You know, having to face a lot of these things, sometimes even alone, you know, whereas in, there's only so much a Zoom can do, right? <laughs> and mm. sometimes when the, the kids are on, on Zoom for hours at a time, it really does get to you, you know. And I, I suppose that would be the same with teachers as well. Have you had good connections with the, the teachers from the school during this time? Yeah, our staff has, has been really good. We stay well connected. Um, as a staff team, so so that's been great. They've been very supportive. Um, from that end, things are things are really good. It's just the students we're concerned about. They're they're the ones who we really want to be able to support well, and it's so much more difficult trying to do that online. So just well, um, yeah, no, you I'm go, Elliot. Say hi, hi. Hey, Elliot. <laughs> Uh, I'm on time as usual. Thank you so much for uh, everyone being so graceful and, and all of that sort of stuff. I see a jandal that's in the corner there, an emoji of a jandal. I'm sure that doesn't mean I'm going to get a crack in the head later on. Uh, that's also a little bit of a sasa. Um, yeah, I, I did catch uh, some of what you guys were saying. I, you're absolutely right, Ethan. I think that the students are actually uh, uh, struggling quite a lot. Uh, yeah, and Liao did bring up also the 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 study that we saw some weeks ago uh, that one of course is this one here and it's referring to high rates hospital treatment for suicide behavior that's parasuicide so that's uh, self-harm that's cutting that's suicidal behavior that ends up with hospitalization and we found that there was a lot more kids uh, because of the lockdown or at least the numbers follow the lockdown uh, a great deal more are self-harming cutting themselves uh, trying to stab themselves and it's just ended up in some real tragic things uh, I think for myself one of the biggest problems that I find as well is that the our media in New Zealand seem to be very much under reporting a lot of this they're not talking about it they seem to be trying to cover it over with free food and music if you get a vaccination it tends to be the majority of South Auckland news it's, it's either it's either hey hey guys KFC uh, vouchers and music for jabs or someone's been shot that that seems to be what's going on at the moment in terms of, of the news there uh, and I did I did also want to ask uh, Ethan so so did you mention what school you're at currently yes yeah, so I'm at Manukau Christian School it's a small Christian school in Manurewa awesome Manurewa south side awesome <laughs> uh, uh, really excellent uh, really good to to hear that you're still carrying on and doing the online things um i did want to actually ask in terms of your young people so we are seeing a, a bit of a spread i'm sure we're going to talk about this later on we are seeing now that the new spread the the more influx of gender ideology and, and the race-based teaching and the climate alarmism has i'm going to point out there has any of that gone into your school has it reached your school at all yeah so um our school is an independent school so we're, we're not um we don't have to teach the government propaganda in any way whatsoever and we don't in fact we actively teach against it um by giving children clear teaching from the bible um clear science lessons we, we teach objective knowledge um, in a way that children can understand the world. Um, and one of the things that we do see is that, um, of course, just from being in the world, they, they pick up lots of this stuff through Instagram and TikTok and all the other social media platforms. But thankfully, I'm really confident our school equips them with just the basic common sense they need to see through so much of the silliness going on in the world around us. So. Thankfully, I'd say for the most part, our students are, are 
we're, we're producing students that aren't going to be brainwashed lefties who can't tell the difference between boys and girls, um, which is really awesome uh, to be a part of something like that. Well said. Oh, well said. <laughs> I also noted that you said you you sort of train them away from that. So mm. when you say that, are you now? I I think that you're actually involved in education where you actually do discuss culture and you discuss the zeitgeist of the current time. Is that correct? Yeah, for sure. We we have a worldviews course that we teach where students look at things like Western civilization and the philosophies and ideologies that have shaped the thoughts throughout the West. And we look at things like um, humanism and the Reformation and then in more modern times, postmodernism and how those things have led into the current cultural insanity that we're experiencing today. So there's some students in my high school, some of the seniors who would take university students to task on some of these things. Um, oh, awesome. We're trying to equip them with the tools they need to engage with the world. Um, and university is a dangerous place these days. Um, dangerous for the soul, dangerous for character and, and building respectable young people. Um, it's actually a dangerous place for that. So we want our, our students to be well equipped for when they get there. All right. <clears throat> Uh, it's so refreshing to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying it's so refreshing to hear that from a teacher. I'm just wondering if I can send my um, <laughs> my son to those last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by <getting> <laughs> uh, Hey, look, it, it, can I ask now, obviously most of us have heard about this mandatory vaccination of teachers. Can mm. you give us some insight? What's going on? Is it actually happening? Is it not? What's going on there? Yeah, so from what I understand, the, the decision is going to be finalized on Monday. Um, but from everything we're seeing, the Ministry of Education supports the idea. Um, the NZEI Teachers Union supports the idea. Um, and I think most sensible kind of conservative-minded people have refused to join the NZEI Teachers Union for, for a long, long time now because of how woke they are. Um, so it's not surprising to see that the main bodies of education and those representing teachers are all for this idea. I, I think it's very, very unlikely that this mandate doesn't go through on Monday. I, I'm almost, it's almost a certainty in my mind that they will mandate vaccines for all teachers of all year levels including early childhood and all support staff that's the conversation being had at the moment right right and it, it, i think that this will be definitely something to be aware of and to watch um i also find this quite interesting uh this here this little comment here by the media of course uh, many parents want to see teachers forced to get vaccinated to be in the charger with young children who cannot be uh, but others think it would be far too heavy-handed approach. <laughs> and I find this is very, very much uh, a very usual idea of media with us, say many parents, uh, but others think. Uh, so I, 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 I do find it quite fascinating that we seem to be getting saturated with a message of force facts, force facts, force facts mm -hmm. by mainstream media and by quite a few of the politicians. Yet, when we find that uh, talking up to parents and normal Kiwis on the ground, it seems to be anecdotally at least, that actually a lot of us say, yeah, yeah get the vax, don't get the vax, but, but the mandate, absolutely no. There seems to be something very against our very innate nature. Uh, what do you two see? Do you two see that this is the same way or what are you guys seeing there out on the street? Yeah, I think there was that stuff poll where they were asking about mandatory vaccination for hospitality. And last I checked, there was in the high 90s in terms of percentage of people saying no we do not want mandatory vaccines for um for, for that area of society so i think i'm definitely seeing that and what you said is exactly right Elliot. it's not a matter of for most people it's not a matter of do we think the vaccine's a good idea or not i think this is the sort of issue that um sorry i i'm i'm you're sorry. Never <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I think this is the sort of issue that all reasonable people can get behind. 
forcing people to get a vaccination should be something that just causes a visceral reaction in anyone who loves freedom or respects the consciences of others. For me, if, if I, if, to give an analogy, if I, if I went to my wife this morning and I said, hey, hun, could, could you make macaroni and cheese for dinner? She'd probably say, yes, she'd make it. It'd be delicious. Great. Um, but if I went to her this morning and I said to her, make macaroni and cheese for dinner or I'm divorcing you, that's going to be a whole different conversation. And it's, and, and it's got very little to do with macaroni and cheese. If, if she got upset with me and I started saying to her, oh, what's your problem with macaroni and cheese? I, I'm being a madman. I've missed the point entirely. And I think this is what all reasonable people should be seeing with this vaccination. If you think it's a good idea, fine. But the question I want to ask these people is, what do you think is a just penalty for those who refuse to get a mandatory vaccine? Do you think it's just to take away their livelihoods, to put their families in a situation of desperation and, and potentially facing hungry nights and having the power shut up? Like, what do you think is fair for those who refuse to get a mandatory vaccination? Um, it, it's, it's got very little to do with the vaccination itself and much more to do with the coercive nature of government here. Um, at least in my mind, that's what I'm seeing. And I think that's what those polls look like, the one you just pulled up, Elliot. Um, yeah, it's, it, it one, just to let, yeah. Just let, uh, let everyone know, that poll closed at uh, just over 20,000 people. So for tw uh, just over 20,000 people, the, uh, uh, the end result was a nice, happy 94% of over 20,000 people 94 percent mm. of the people said no that vaccine certificates should not be mandatory at hospitality businesses you know that is damning uh, I, I don't think that's that's not even close to being halfway close that's a straight up you know so this narrative that we keep on being fed time and time again just absolutely saturated with is 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 false it's false you know and that, that might be a straw poll but thousands of people were on that one you know, I, I think yeah. it's, it's quite fascinating. Uh, Leo, what do you think? What do you think about, uh, what are you starting to see on the street? You know, I, I've, I've seen more and more a huge divide. You know, this is what is happening. It's, it's causing so much division that wasn't there before. And um, I, for myself, um, a few weeks ago, I got a letter. Um, it was a, actually, it was a, a text uh, from one of my sons saying that they were having the vaccination bus over at the school. So I responded. In fact, I actually got a call from the school nurse to bring your family down, come and get vaccinated. Okay, that's one thing. But to actually have your number being used for something other than school purposes was another thing. <laughs> that I was like, how dare you use the number that I've given you? for something other than school purposes but my my response to the principal was if anything happens to any of us if we have an adverse reaction to the vaccination will you take responsibility as a school will you take responsibility for any of this i had no reply from them they didn't even acknowledge the things that i was saying to them and this was because they were using the school um, as a place for people to come and get vaccinated. Um, I know this is a little bit uh, separate in the topic, but this is the kind of idea that's um, that people are thinking, well, actually the schools are with it. You know, don't bring the kids back to school until you are vaccinated. Um, but, you know, we, we still haven't seen um, the, the adverse reactions that are happening to people who have been vaccinated. So there is a um, there is huge amount of... Um, push that Ethan and I were talking about before, where if you can, if you want to get vaccinated, you can come down and uh, get some KFC. We, I got a text the other day to say we will pay for your taxi and have lunch with on us and uh, coffee. You know, after your jab, this is the kind of thing. And you know, if this was exactly what it was, you would not need to push me to come and get one. We have um, a. a a van going up and down our street with uh, megaphones <laughs> telling everyone to come down and get vaccinated. Yes, you know, these, these are the kind of things that you just, it just honestly blows your mind that they would go to those lengths 
to in order to co not only coerce us, but this is sort of heading to if you don't get vaccinated, you won't be able to come back. Hmm. I, I, I want to point. I want to just check a question that has been sent to us. Uh, it looks like a loner. She's asking, uh, or she's asking, are you, is your school ministry funded? Just curious how your school may be handling any new vaccine mandates. Uh, and I know that you referred that your school is actually not one of the normal public education schools. Yeah, so we're not, um, we're not a public school and we're not an integrated school either. So we don't teach the New Zealand curriculum at all. We're independent. I think we receive very minimal funding from the government, um, but it's, it's very, very minimal. Um, but we're essentially a private school. So um, in terms of how our school would manage the vaccine mandates, I have no idea. The conversation started once we're on school holidays and our teachers are very good at not um, engaging in work matters over the holidays. <laughs> so it's something that we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, I trust my school a lot. I think they're, they're really solid on this sort of stuff. So um, I mm. think that I, I trust them to make very wise decisions around this issue. Yep, no, no, that's awesome. And and how do you feel now? I might have missed something, so I apologise. How do you feel about the fact that now there seems to be a push, not just for the buses to turn up to uh, schools and for school leaders to actually start to push their own students to start getting it, whether they are still at school or not. Uh, and also now there's a starting to be a push overseas that Pfizer is now starting to push for uh, uh, the children now. Uh, I I believe it's far as uh, six to 15 year olds now to get the the vaccination uh and there's a lot of controversy over there what are your thoughts around that yeah i think this it's it's shameful that this is being taken out of the hands of parents um this really should be an issue that is left to parents and the fact that that's being stripped from parents is such an overreach of government authority god has given children to their parents first and foremost the family is is pre-political and for the for the magistrates to reach into the family and start interfering with family life is a gross injustice in my mind so i think that that's my main concern L leave it to the parents to make those decisions and and get out of get out leave our kids alone don't touch our kids Stay out of our families and well, do the job that's been assigned to you by God and punish criminals. Um, but mm. stay out of our families. That's that's my main thing on that. Mm. Oh, well said, well said. Hey, look, guys, I also want to uh, just point to yourselves. This, again, this is actually just coming out over the last few days only. Um, this, of course, is, is what we've seen uh, from Project Veritas. Veritas is the... Uh, they are the media organization, probably one of the best, if not, I think, the best investigative journalism that we currently have. This is a, a whistleblower from the Pfizer area, uh, and they actually were able to discover that there's been a whole bunch of emos and that going on, uh, uh, sorry, emos, memos going on, that there is actual, uh, the remains of aborted children, the remains of aborted babies is actually being utilized in these uh, new vaccines. So, and the fact that what they're talking about here, of course, is that uh, emails are going around saying, you know, what, hey, hey, don't talk about this, don't put it out there. We don't want to, we don't want to discuss this. Uh, I, I think Project Veritas are absolutely amazing. They have been able to do this, and they've been able to find find a couple of other parts. We might have a look at that later on. Uh, what What are your feelings around what's going on over in the US that we're finding from the Pfizer vaccine that New Zealanders are not just being encouraged, but it looks like starting to be forced to take? What are your thoughts around that element of it? Yeah, it's really good that you brought this up, Elliot. I think the exact language from that document was that um, cell lines that originate from aborted fetuses were used in the testing of the Pfizer vaccine. Um, just in case anyone tries to pull us up. We, yeah, in the testing of the vaccine, uh, cell lines from aborted fetuses were used. And I think the reason why they're suppressing that is because um, many Christians and other religious people will appeal to that as a religious exemption from getting the vaccine, um, which is fair enough. If you're using murder vic victims to test your vaccine um, and its efficacy, then I understand why many Christians would be against that. Um, but I think what's going on here is they want to take away the right 
of Christians in particular to raise religious exemption objections. And I think um, that's a fair objection in terms of wanting a religious exemption from this vaccine. But I, I, I think there's many other religious exemptions we can appeal to. The, the one that I appeal to is, is this. I, I subscribe to a um, religion that teaches that I am not the government's slave and that the government is not my God. And therefore, I'm not obliged to stick myself with every needle you command me to stick myself with. I'm not your slave. Now, would that religious objection fly? Probably not. But one of the other things I object to is the government deciding what does and doesn't constitute a, a legitimate religious objection. My religious objection is I'm not your slave. Jesus is my king. Um, does that count? Probably not in your eyes, but it's true nonetheless. They, they, I think what they want is they want us to have the sort of religious objections that the Amish have to joining the Marines. Just some arbitrary, over-the-top, in all cases, we never ever do this. Well, that's not how Christianity works. We're a religion that um, factors in the different circumstances at play. It's like the example I used before. My wife has no problem with making macaroni and cheese, but she would have a problem if I was trying to leverage that against her in order to get my way in threatening a divorce. Um, our consciences are not this black and white thing that is just bound to some strict rule of either you're never either your position is i never take any vaccines or i take all vaccines no it's not it's not that black and white um what if my religious objection is i don't submit to tyranny um that's a religious objection it's um it's the christian view of freedom that has sent shivers down the spines of tyrants for two thousand years um it's the religion of Christianity that has overthrown tyrannical leaders for thousands of years. So you don't get to tell me what is and isn't a religious objection. Um, that, that's been my, my main position on this anyway. Well said. Oh, well said. Uh, Leo, what do you think? What do you think about the, the that quite shocking undercover <laughs> that the Pfizer vaccine has had the involvement of the remains of children? I really honour the people who are the whistleblowers. We need more of those because uh, what is happening is when things don't make sense, you have to hold on to the things that don't make sense because the more the, the media and the government normalise it, the more you will... It will just be such a big effort to to push against that. It becomes just a part. And the same with what Ethan said. It's all about the wording and the language that you use that actually can sway you to a point of dividing with people. I, I did a post before about um, how is it that we're, you know, our, we're giving pharmaceuticals billions of dollars and yet we we can't stay friends with people who you know we've been friends our whole lives and that's who they're defending they're defending pharmaceuticals who are getting billions of dollars and we've our friendships are wrecked if we go really back to the basics what is actually dividing us and you you start to see these whistleblowers bring out things and you like yeah exactly yeah exactly that's exactly what i what what doesn't make sense to me that is coming mm. out so i i really honor the ones who are brave um enough to start to speak out because we need more of that we need more people doing that i think also what, we, what we've seen from uh, project veritas is uh, some real powerful another this is another powerful set again this has only come out in the last uh, several days uh, where they've actually been able to have undercover discussions with Pfizer scientists, including, I believe, the senior associate scientists as well. And 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 they are actually blowing up what the media and also politicians, not just in New Zealand, but of course around the world, including Joe Biden and his staff, in terms of the narrative that they have been putting out there. I mean, these are the actual Pfizer scientists themselves who are basically saying that, look, if you have had COVID, you, don't, you shouldn't even need the vaccine. That, uh, and they, they are talking a great deal about this sort of thing. Uh, you guys also mentioned that the, the idea about a lot of money is going to these pharmaceutical companies. 
I also noted that uh, I believe it was about five or six hours ago it was reported that uh, I think it's Moderna has uh, entered the Forbes richest list and that's been the first time they've ever been in that list we've we've also seen the share stock for Pfizer has just exp not exponentially but has exploded in a skyrocketing rate so uh, you know I, I think that this absolutely shocking material from Project Veritas is just it's absolutely exposing you know uh, our media for liars or absolutely incompetent in terms of basic investigative journalism uh, or actually complicit I might say uh, so in terms of this particular Project Veritas uh, linking one with the remains of the children and now of course with the uh, exposure of scientists who have been telling people undercover that yeah it's an evil corp they feel like it's an evil corporation that in actual fact if you're natural you don't need to have the vaccination uh, and in fact here yeah, basically our organization has run on COVID money now uh, can I I'll see if I can get your thoughts there uh, what, what are you thinking there Ethan yeah I think it's um, definitely concerning T to be honest my expertise isn't in science and I, and I really struggle to read the academic papers that explain a lot of this stuff but I think there's enough for reasonable people to, to go, hey, look, they're using cell lines from abortive fetuses in their testing of the vaccine. There's definitely um, a lot of dodginess going on with these pharmaceutical companies. Um, Pfizer has been fined millions and millions of dollars for corruption and fraud and all sorts of uh, wicked behavior. Um, there's definitely enough there for reasonable people to go, hey, this isn't okay. Um, but for me, my, my, because I find it hard to understand that, my main objection to the vaccine has always been um, I'm far more concerned about government tyranny than I am about COVID. Um, governments have killed more people in the last century than COVID ever could. Um, it's, it's tyrannical governments that are the real pandemic that's plagued humanity for a long, long time. And I think... Um, that the COVID situation is being used as an occasion for tyranny um, and for the destruction of freedom in a way that will cause far more damage than than COVID ever could. So my main objection to getting the vaccine is that um, I, I refuse to go along with the government tyranny. This is my way of resisting their efforts to strip us of our freedoms and our liberties and control us more than they already have. Um, but yeah, sorry, I, I'm not the expert on any of the science stuff, unfortunately. Well, apparently if you're Susie Wiles, of course, who is the, I believe she's a virologist, uh, I suppose if we follow her lead, we can just go biking all over the place that we want to, paddle our feet in the water and watch our mates have a swim and break the rules. So that, <laughs> maybe we should... I still haven't seen her bike, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> I just want to say, though... Um, that I actually got COVID last year in February. Both my husband and I got COVID. But the thing that I found really interesting, um, and we, we knew we had it because we had we had some guests from overseas that came and stayed with us and when they'd left, um, we, we couldn't breathe, you know. So we actually knew it was quite different from the one that we had. The two things that I found uh, very interesting is I couldn't find an antibody test, nor could I find a T-cell test, which actually tells you that you're immune for the rest of your life. Now, you won't find either of those tests here in New Zealand, or it's going to be very difficult to get. The reason why is what that guy said in, um, in that uh, Pfizer video, is that actually once you've gotten it and you're immune to it, there's no need for a vaccine. And if there's no need for a vaccine, then the, the government or whoever's like have lost out on a lot of money. So if we're trying to get rid of what the testing is, you will find that you will, um, once you find out that everyone's had it and everyone's gone through it, there's no need for a vaccine. So very interesting things to think about. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So I, I think we're definitely having a, a fight on, on different fronts about this. I, I take heart because uh, i've been seeing a lot of online that there's a bit of a i wouldn't say depression but there's a lot of people who are sad there's a lot of comments saying that and i'm one of them i'll be fair 
there's a lot of comments out there saying that they are starting to see how it is that the population of Nazi Germany actually sort of stood by and let some of the most most evil things ever in human history to occur and be okay with it and they're starting to say that it's, this is given a bit of an insight and I'll be fair I'm one of those guys who says that as well but I am seeing it being repeated uh, I think it's quite fascinating that we are in a society where there is quite a few of our people our own people who are quite happy to to snitch in a certain way to throw people under the bus for what they regard as the the the, the public safety factor um, I, I think where I'm taking heart though is that there's a lot more people who are quietly standing opposed to it and, and the news hub poll is a good example not the only one but it's a good example of of that sort of thing as well um, either you do keep on bringing up that tyrannical aspect I have to say I I would like to believe that's that that should be a that should be a foolish thought it should be something which is come on mate you know that that's just crazy juice are you able to tell us why it is that you think that we are moving in that there's possibility that we'll move into a tyrannical sector in New Zealand what what do you think what are you seeing that that maybe some of us don't see yeah I mean I think of um there's a quote by an author named Theodore Dalrymple and he talks about essentially how political correctness is just communist propaganda writ small. He he says in, in this famous quote that um that if you can get people to assent to lies, then you emasculate them and make them easy to control. And if that's the case, then we're living in a society where we're being called to give our assent to the most outrageous lies you can possibly imagine. We're in a time where um progressives and woke um, hustlers are, are, are literally attempting to fundamentally change the way we use language so that we can no longer even speak about issues without already forfeiting the ground we wish to defend. Um, take any issue, abortion. We can't call it abortion or baby murder. We have to call it women's health care and women's right to choose. Um, or, or a little bit old one now, gay, gay marriage. Um, marriage has always been a covenant relationship between a man and a woman. And it's very difficult to argue for a fundamental redefinition of marriage. So they literally changed the language of the debate to make it about marriage equality. So we're no longer talking about what marriage is, but who has the right to get married. I think everyone has the right to get married. A gay man has the right to marry any woman he chooses. But you're not talking about that. You're talking about changing the definition of marriage. And now we live in a society where um, we've been forced to give our assent to the overturning of biology, the overturning of life itself. And so many people have gone along with that. And if that's the case, then we live in a society where people have been um, morally beaten down and enslaved. They're, Often, I mean, take an example, say your, your workplace is, hey, it's June, everyone's wearing a rainbow badge on their chest, or you're losing your job. Um, I think we live in a time now where many people, they get an ultimatum like that, and they don't know how to evaluate what decision they should make. They think, I choose between consequences or keeping my job. But what they don't realize is that there's consequences both ways. You can't escape consequences. The tough road is ahead of you, whichever way you turn. You either face the consequences of potentially losing your job or you face the consequences of belittling yourself, debasing yourself, making yourself a little bit less respectable, a little bit less likely to stand up in the future. And you destroy your soul a little bit. You give evil another victory. And I think many people don't weigh that when they make tough decisions. It's not a matter of, will there be consequences? The question is, which consequences do you wish to face? Do you want to face the physical consequences? Or do you want to destroy your soul? It's a, it brings you back to the words of Jesus. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his soul? I think for a long time we've lived in a society where gaining the world has taken precedent over our souls. And as a result... Um, we now live in a society where someone can say, hey, come jab your body and I'll give you KFC. 
I think any man who has any self-respect or dignity would would be insulted by such a humiliating suggestion. Um, it, it's embarrassing for me as a Samoan to think that someone could come to me and say, hey, I'll give you KFC if you come get jabbed. And, and to think that I would debase myself like that? How little do you think of us? Um, but unfortunately, our, our characters have been eroded. They've been melted away over decades of slowly forcing us into corners of making decisions that where we choose physical prosperity over the, the growing of our soul. And I think the punishment we inflict on our souls is far worse than anything the government can inflict on us. Um, and I think we're in a time now where that will be tested. Is, do we really believe that? Because that's what we must believe. Do you believe that punishments inflicted on your body are to be preferred over punishment inflicted on your soul? If you believe that, then you you will make decisions that benefit your character and your soul at the cost of your physical well-being and your your financial well-being. For university students, when the woke professor gives you an assignment and you know that you have to say outrageous things to pass, it's not whether you'll face consequences, it's which consequences will you face. Um, and that's where I think we are. Sorry, I, I got preachy there. Hey, 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 preach, preach. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look I, was, I think I'll people see. are loving what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, that's, that is straight up. That is talent or subtle. Hard. <laughs> uh, so I, I think, you, yeah, a lot of people are absolutely agree with that. Uh, I also, we also did have this uh, brought through. I thought I might just show it a little bit there. Something I, I think it was quite powerful also to, to bring up. So yeah, just something that uh, that got brought in, and, and I think it's quite a powerful sort of reminder that uh, we we have to be vigilant. We can't forget where we've come from. We can't forget what our own people actually fought for, uh, with with blood and sacrifice. Uh, and, and actually speaking about that, today I was absolutely very honoured, very proud to uh, to be part of someone who actually had a bit of a speaking moment. Uh, Liao, of course, gave her. She gave her uh, submission, oral submission to the select committee. Uh, Leah, do you want to have a talk about that? Because actually it's really powerful. It's, it's, it's blown up quite nicely on a few of the different platforms. Um, do you want to just take us through what was going on there? And, and yeah, really, how, how did it go? So I had the opportunity today to to speak um, before the select committee around um, banning conversion therapy. And so what I had the opportunity to say and to talk about was my own story. And um, there's one thing that people cannot argue over is your story. And so uh, a little bit of what, I'll just give you a brief. Uh, when I was little, I was sexually abused as a child. And so my whole worldview was completely changed. And so from that point of view, I didn't want to be a female. And I spent quite a few of my years um, hating being a female. So um, in that regard, I... I had said to the select committee, if I had gone to a trusted teacher or a counsellor and said to them how I was... being molested they and and they were doing what they were going to do now with banning conversion therapy, I would have been down a path that I think I wouldn't have been able to come back from. Um, so the puberty blockers, uh, those kind of things, I wouldn't have had my children. You know, I wouldn't have had my three boys. I would have gone down um, a pathway that I would have regretted my whole life. So I spoke and I just said, I am a mother. 
of three boys. I will fight for them. You know, they are my heart and soul. I am the one who is responsible for them. And so you are taking away that responsibility as a parent from me. Um, I have their best interest at heart. So I, I just shared with them my story and that you, um, at 16 years old, at 16, there's no way I would have been thinking straight. And for them to um, help me change my mind at that point, around 16, I would have regretted it so much. So, um, yeah, so that was my submission. It was only um, just under four minutes, but it was a, a powerful story that um, I think both the... Um, both of the people that were there <laughs> were, were quite taken back by it. Um, That's right. So I, I it was Vanushi Walters and, and Mark Mitchell. Yeah. They're absolutely right. You're, you're right. They absolutely were. So that was my opportunity for just a moment to bring the voice of a mother <laughs> to, into this, you know, so that they understood that. Um, actually, my identity, um, I never lost it. It's just that um, God was able to give me back my identity as a woman. And um, it was actually him that I actually needed to have common sense discussions. And I needed to have prayer around it. Um, because when, once they ban it, the ban uh, of this conversion therapy, they say, uh, our parents won't be able to... Uh, say anything to our children, you know, our rights in our own home, you know, uh, the rights of our parents, um, you know, ministers won't be able to pray over the, you know, so I said, not only are you silencing the voices of the people wanting to help, you're going to be silencing the voices of those needing help. And that's going to be the biggest thing. So you're, you're saying one thing, you really actually need um, uh a balanced perspective, not just from one coming from the government. So yeah, that was my no. little submission well, I, today. I thought it was, it was absolutely stunning. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. And and I mean, that's that's transparency. That's actually brave. That's actually stunning. That's that's the definition of it. And I know you don't like those. I don't, you don't like to take the compliments, you know, that well and all that sort of stuff, but just uh, bloody well done. Uh, good on you. It was, it was absolutely an honor to, to even uh, uh, view it, actually. Uh, Ethan, we haven't heard on, on your, I believe we haven't really heard too much about your opinion on the the so-called banning gay conversion therapy. What are your thoughts around it and, and how do you think and feel, I suppose, about that? Yeah, so um, I've written a submission on conversion practices. It's published, you can find it through uh, sojournal.co.nz. Um, it's where I publish some of my thoughts. Um, but in short, it's it's a horrendous bill that would it would criminalize much of my teaching um i'm a person who teaches the bible for for a living um and the way the bill is framed at the moment is if you if you engage in conversion practices with anyone 18 years or under it's immediately a crime um regardless of whether or not there's any harm done um but in short i i, I think that it's a bill that's from its outset, it's been a pernicious, um, calculated attack on Christianity um, and Christian teaching. LGBT activists like Shanil Lal have, from the outset, sought to silence Christian teaching. And for all the talk about how this is not a, a religious attack, it very clearly is. And my, I, I would become a criminal immediately when this bill passes. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing what I do because my conscience stands and falls before the law. Um, but it's outrageous that Christian teaching and the Christian ethic on gender and sexuality could become illegal in New Zealand. It's absolutely outrageous. And it's a travesty that in a Western country where our system of law and politics is built on biblical law, case law systems have shaped the way we do law in the West. Um, and that comes from the Reformation in Christianity. And now we're about to make Christian teaching illegal. It's absolutely outrageous. And I think this is a hill that Christians need to die on. Um, there's no way that I would ever, ever fold on this. In fact, I think it's time where we, where we do what Daniel did in the Bible. In a book of the Bible, one of the godly prophets was um, in a city named Babylon where they made a decree that no one was allowed to 
pray for 30 days to any other god um, except for the king of Babylon. Instead of just praying quietly in his home and finding sneaky ways to keep obeying God, he prays in his window where everyone can see him in open defiance of that law. Um, I think that's the sort of thing Christians need to do as soon as this bill passes. It's, it's, this is another example of the perversion of language as well. To call what Christians do conversion practice, I encourage children struggling with their sexuality to, um, to recognize the goodness of the way that God has made them and to accept the goodness of his creation and his design for them. Um, I'm trying to affirm them in the created order and in the way in which God has made them. The people who want to mutilate them with hormones and surgery, they're the ones who are performing some crude type of attempted conversion, not us. So I, I, I even disagree with the language of calling Christian teaching conversion practice. No, no, no. We're the ones affirming them in their God-given gender. You're the ones surgically trying to convert them into something they're not. Uh, so I've got very strong thoughts on the conversion practices, Bill. Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, well done. Uh, absolutely, absolutely well done. And, and I think it's just shocking. Uh, I also find it quite fascinating that the the biscuit tin, which is where the apparent bills come out of, that it keeps on oddly just coming up with the more woke policies that come out. It's just quite fascinating that that, that does happen. Uh, but look, uh, it's it's actually heading out. It's uh, nearly one hour. Um, I actually want to say, look, thank you so much for joining us, Ethan. There's a great deal of, of there's a great deal more that we need to hear from you. And I, I mm -hmm. like to think that in the coming months, especially, we're going to hear more and more from you, from those of us who are on the front line of, of this culture war. Uh, and I think it's a, I definitely think it's a one worth fighting. Uh, it's good to see that over the US, families, parents are, are finally starting to stand up. It's good to see in Australia that the Patriots are standing up. Uh, and uh, for example, ACL Martin Isles, that he is packing out theatres, yeah. uh, hundreds of people going there to hear it based because of the erosion of everything that we've been speaking about today. So, uh, look, thank you so much for joining us, Ethan. And, Ethan, I'd love to uh, ask if you could actually set us up on our prayer. Uh, and if you could finish us off with prayer. And just let you know, guys, after, after Ethan has finished his prayer, I'm going to pop in a little video clip. It's four minutes. It's just a nice little way to finish off. A little bit of a laugh, a little bit of a uh, satirical laugh at things as well. So, uh, God bless you guys all. And, uh, Ethan, would love to... Thanks again. Yeah. yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's always a blessing to chat with you guys, and I love so much what you're doing. But yeah, let us pray. Awesome. Uh, Father God, we do thank you that Christ is king, that he is ruling and reigning at your right hand even now. Uh, we thank you that he has all authority in heaven and on earth. Uh, we pray that we would take courage from this, that we would um, that we would pursue the growth of our character and holiness so that we might live in ways that honor you. We pray that you'd grant repentance to our nation, and help them to see the beauty and goodness of our Lord. Uh, we ask these things in the good name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, uh, God bless you guys all. Uh, I'm going to show you something. This is exactly this is your taxpayers at work. You fund these people, uh, and this is exactly what what we see going on right now. So, uh, look, have a great evening. Have a great weekend. We're here. You know, all of us. Uh, Ethan, Liao, myself, we are by. We're here. We're all together. We are ready to fight this. So don't don't give up. Kiakaha, we'll be seeing you real soon. All right. <laughs> I have one final message. Be kind. Wouldn't they consider, in fact, the science that you're putting forward is somewhat fringe? Uh, let me clarify for you that this is a select committee where we get to ask you the questions about your submission. There are plenty of scientists that would be saying that XX is female and XY is male, and that if there's a penis, there's oh. a male, and if vagina, there's a female. No, like, there aren't any more. Like, the most recent gender research doesn't say that. There's some stuff coming here that I've seen on Scientific American, so it's a reputable site, uh, like highly reputable. Uh, tēnā korua, or hello. Thank you very much for taking the time to participate in our process. I'm also intrigued why someone from Houston, Texas <laughs> is willing to submit on a bill. Because, I, because I'm a national, because I'm one of the experts in the world. Mm. Uh, some of the other arguments maybe, but the one about toilets really is a nonsense. You've called trans women, trans identifying males. Um, I want to note that's incredibly harmful. 
that's an assumption that's being made. And the studies that do tell us which come first say that the psychiatric problems come first. Okay. Um, so what? If sex was a binary, I might agree with your arguments, but we're finding in most recent biology that sex is not a binary at all. In fact, we're, I'm looking at some stuff on Scientific American, which says that um, sex uh, really is um, a, a spectrum. Have you come across or engaged with people who um, don't identify by a male, female, <laughs> biological, religious gender? So, could, what's the end of it? Biological, religious, gender. Do, do, do. Reading your materials always, um, always interesting because I would say, as a general rule, if you don't want to be accused of transphobia, uh, transphobia is perhaps don't say transphobic things. So, does that mean you have uh, a degree in science? What is the relevance of that question? I'm asking the question. So, you, um, you've, you've created a lot of emphasis on science. Do you have yes, qualifications yes. in science? No, actually, I have a law degree. So in that case, you might be interested to read Scientific American. Oh, um, no, 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 Deborah, this is not be, our position. No, I won't be silenced, Ian. This is not I our will position not be to silent. give lectures on, You may sorry. not silence me, Ian. You may not silence me. Right, okay, no, my PhD is philosophy, so there you are. It would be preferable if you didn't try to use my research against the very things that I stand for. And those feelings naturally dissipate. Is that allowed by, via this law? If it's not allowed via this law through some intimation or some specific phrase, then this, this law would be abusing children, I have no doubt. Most of the people who've had the chance to be spoken on, on this panel and the other one have not received the respect that they're due as members of the public giving up their time to prepare mm. good quality information. And I feel very, very strongly about that. Thank you. Because as you've said, we want to get the bill through. I'm a bit worried that you haven't fully understood the bill, but I don't think in a minute we've got time to explain it to you. I think that you've you've gone for the wrong angle. So I just would encourage you to reread the bill and reread some aspects of it because um yeah, it will take longer than a minute for us to explain to you what it actually does do, but it doesn't do what you've just said. Very quickly, very quick, because I've only got a, really got a minute. Oh, I'm sorry I've taken so long. You need to get a question from Deborah or you'll talk about what you want to talk about, whichever you want. Oh, I'd rather talk about what I'm doing.